Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to break down a pair of best ends of lamb. Um, but before that, I'm going to show you the equipment that you need to do it. So on my tray here, I've got my boning knife, a chopping knife and a steel to make sure the knife stays sharp. I've also got a saw, a butcher saw, and I've got a cleaver. And I'll show you in a little while what we're going to use them for. So coming back to the pair of best ends, um, this comes from the back of the animal. Um, and as the thing that you need to be looking for is that it's got a, a nice eye of meat on the, on the centre there, that it's not sticky or slimy, which means that it's, it's over-matured. Meat needs a certain amount of uh, maturing, but it can go from one extreme to the other. You'll get a bit of discoloration on the outside there, but that's fine as long as it doesn't get too sticky. Um, a pair of best ends can have somewhere between seven to nine rib bones. Normally it's eight, and sometimes as the sheep get older you'll get nine. And the rib bones are these ones along the back here. The fillets do sit from this end down onto the saddle, but as you can see they've been retained on the saddle. So, again, as I say in all the videos I do, there are many ways to complete a task. I'm going to show you the way that I was shown, um, but it's not necessarily the exact way and the finished result can be achieved in different ways. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to remove what they call the bark, which is this skin on the outside. Now I highly recommend that to remove this, the best end should come straight out of the fridge um, so that it's as cold as possible. Um, again, I use a cloth to help me pull it up and I'm pulling from the, the bottom up to the top of the, the best end. This is where all the stamps are um, that designate where the animal has come from and then stamps help people know which, uh, where the, the origin of the, the animal has been. So as you can see, because the meat is nice and cold, this comes up quite easily. If your meat is all sweaty and hot, where you've had it outside the fridge for a little while, you may find this really difficult. If you do, at that point, you can use a knife to cut it off. So as you can see, it pulls up nicely when it's nice and cold. So if I just finish off getting this last bit off, and again, once we trim the fat, anything that's left will be removed. Um, some people will not remove this until they've actually taken the, the, the actual best ends off but I prefer to do it at this stage because you've got a, a little bit more leverage against the actual bone down the centre. As you can see, there is one central bone down there with the ribs coming off the centre. There's two best ends, one sits on there, one sits on there, and that's what will give us our rack of lamb. So the first thing I'm going to do is just going to remove from the back any excess fat that is not needed. And the same on the other side to give me a chance to see the bones. Okay, now this is where the cleaver and the saw comes in. I'm going to show you how to use both of these when removing the best ends. I'm going to start with the saw and then I'll do another one with the cleaver. So, we're aiming to retain the rib bones but get rid of this central chine bone as it's called. So I'm going to use the saw, I'm angling it slightly inwards and as you can hear it's cutting through the bone. Now the reason I suggest that the saw is the best way is because you've got a little bit more control when you're sawing and you can hear and feel. So I've gone so far and now if you can see I'm pressing apart and I've now exposed where the bones are. So what I don't want to do is to cut into the meat. So I'm taking my time, I can feel on my hand that the saw is still going through, it's still going through bone. It hasn't gone into the meat. And again, I'm gonna move it a little bit more. I can hear it cracking and crunching. And as it does that, I can feel now there's probably just one bone in the middle that's not quite through. I'm going to take my knife, I'm just going to check where I'm at. Yep, 
Not quite there yet. We need to go just a little bit further. That's it. I heard it go and now I'm completely through all the bone. I'm going to repeat that on the other side now. And again, I'm angling my saw slightly inwards. And the whole idea is I don't want to cut into the meat because that's the important part. And we don't want to disfigure or disshape it. So again, I'm going to push against the bone like so. And so I've seen all the bones are free here. I've just got a little bit at this end. And if you, if you could hear that, you can actually hear when you've gone past the bones. You can hear that you've got to the, down to the meat. So now you can see, I've released the two sides from the chine bone. We're now going to very carefully angle our knife inwards so that we don't cut into the meat. And come down. So... I'm angling that knife inwards, all the way inwards, and coming down. So there we go. We've taken it off, as you can see, there's no meat left in there, we haven't wasted anything, and we've got our first best end off. So I'm going to put that one there, and I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side. Okay. As you can see, again, the best end has been removed, there's no meat on there, and we've got a clean chine bone there. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a little one there. So we have nine bones on this one. Okay, as I said, we, a, a rack of lamb is normally six bones, but if we were cutting this for cutlets, we could probably get sort of seven out of it. So we're now going to start the trimming up process. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to move the shoulder blade, which you'll see is slightly tucked in the thicker end of it, and it's a little cartilage bone, which is there. On some of them you'll really feel it's quite plasticky, on others it's quite soft, and on this one it's quite soft. So we're now looking at the eye of the meat, and we're looking that we want the eye plus a half in fat for the shape. So I'm going to now take from there to there, all the way along the top, and down and off. So I'm now exposing the bone. Now that's predominantly fat, okay? But you can, in some cases, have quite a layer of meat there, which you can take off and use as a braise to pick and then make faggots from. So there is always byproducts to all these things that we're making. So we're now left with the rack like this. We're going to remove some of the, the back. So carefully using your knife, not digging into the meat. Remove the sinew. Okay. And you will come across a line of gristle. Okay. Which on this one is not actually too bad. There's not a lot of it. Okay, so I'm now going to remove some of the back fat because there is an excessive amount on this, this rack but I want to keep a certain covering to, to protect the meat when it's being cooked. 
Okay? You can render lamb fat down to use it um, for confiting with. Um, and as you can see, this, it's now exposing a little bit more of that gristle, which is down the back there. So just with the tip of my knife, I'm just going to remove a little bit more of that gristle. It's a gristle line there. Okay, now we're going to start trimming up. the best thing in cleaning it up, okay? I'll take the view that this bone here is one too many. So I'm gonna start by taking that one out. It should go there. Okay, so now we've got our rack of lamb. I feel this end's maybe a little bit shorter than the other end, so I'm just gonna even that up. And now I'm going to take the meat, the trimming between the bones. Now again, these little pieces here, if we were doing a lot of racks of lamb, could all go into a little pot and be braised. And once they're really nice and soft, pull them apart and use them for a little faggot or something. But generally speaking, we would use them to make stock. And again, as we all know, Ingredients for stock are very important. Okay, we now got to the stage where we need to clean the bones up. Okay, it's a bit of a tedious job, but the most easiest way is scraping them down with your knife, like so. I will show you on the other rack a slightly different way of doing it, but it, and again, it's a competition way, possibly, if you got the time. But again, it's all down to time. Okay, right. I've got to the stage where I've cleaned all these bones up, but I've left the bits at the top because now we're going to level them up so that they're all the same size. Um, there's two ways of doing this. Um, the good old using your chopping knife and doing like so, removing them like so, but as you just saw, sometimes that splinters them. Okay. So another method we've got is using either a pair of scissors or a pair of secateurs. Okay. Uh, these are uh, sturdy fish scissors, but you can use garden secateurs. And as you can see, it's a slightly cleaner way of doing it, but at the same time, it takes longer. So you have the two methods. So, now using a cloth, that one has shattered for me, just wipe them bones down, clean them up, make sure that we have everything. Always go back over things. If you're not happy with something, then then let's have another go. So I kind of not happy there's a bit too much excess fat on the back of here. So I'm going to remove some of that of this one. Okay, I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to look at it. I think there's maybe can come back a little bit there on the fat. A little bit there. Okay, so there we have, we have a rack of lamb, two, four, six, seven bones. We can do one or two things now. We can cut these into cutlets, or we can cut them into two racks, which are then I would split in half, and I would remove one more bone, so that there were equally three bones on each one. We have a rack there, I'm going to show you how we take this one down to a loin now. 
So down, you wouldn't even start to clean these bones up, but you've also got a loin here that a lot of people would work with. And a piece of usable meat comes off like that, and again, we've got the bones like that. So, we've got the loin of lamb here now. I'm just going to clean this up quickly for you. Again, remember what I said, all the, the bits that have got the meat on it can go into confit, so not being wasteful. So again, in that piece there, we've got some usable meat that we could make confit out of. We've now just got our loin of lamb. And I just nicked my knife underneath the sinew. And I'm now gently working across, making sure I don't waste any of the meat. This is the expensive part of the joint that we're doing here. Now you can clean this up as little or as much as you want to. The the sinew will be, if you leave too much of it on, will be slightly tough. So, um, from a chef's perspective, we would tend to remove it all, but it does make the joint rather small. So, in some cases, you might leave a little bit of the fat on the loin. I'm just going to nip that bit off. I'm just going to nip that bit off. Okay, so. We have, from our pair of best ends, we've got our cutlets and we've got a loin of lamb. As I said, many ways, different ways of doing it. I've shown you two here. One worked well, one was a little bit um, not so good, but it showed you the principle behind it. This uh, best end can be cut into cutlets now, okay? Or it can be cut into two racks of lamb. Some chefs take all the fat off because they don't like fat at all but I'm a great believer in making sure that a little bit of fat is left on there because as it's cooking, it bastes. Okay, as I said to you just now, I'm now gonna show you how to remove the rat salam using a cleaver, which is, once you get a little bit more expertise at using it, then maybe you'll be able to do that. I highly recommend you start with a saw, but as you get more proficient, you can use a cleaver. So, again, I'm going down the middle of the bone from top to bottom. First one side, then I'm going down the other side. So, we've started this time at the opposite side of the piece of meat. Before, we cut with the saw first. With this one, we're going to release the meat to a certain extent. If I just do it a little bit here, I can show you what I mean. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone down to there and there's a little bit of a H bone there. You just jump over it and then you come out. And I've freed up the meat so that when I'm using the cleaver, I can see what I'm doing. So I've freed up the meat all the way down that side so now when I use the cleaver, I can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to do the same on the other side. Up and over that little joint. As I was saying, you don't have quite so much control with the cleaver as you do with the saw, because you are chopping. And you also need a reasonably firm surface to be doing it on. Otherwise, it will bounce everywhere. If I show you again, we've got the best ends are separated like that. I now take my cleaver and using just the tip, okay, I've pulled the meat back with that hand. I'm just going to use the tip. And you can see I'm going all the way down with the cleaver.
you get carried away and you go in too far, you can imagine how you, you can damage the meat that's in there, yeah? Okay, if you go in too far. Okay, so that's one. I'm going to just show you that you do the other side in the same way. So again, you pull the meat apart, you've cut it away, and just with the tip of the cleaver, chopping action all the way down. Again, if you went in too far with your cleaver, you would end up taking it into the meat. So there you go. That's just another way of removing the best end from the china.